ABC2. Nai Bingi music is the most original form of Rastafarian music. It is played at worship ceremonies called ground nations, which include drumming, chanting, and dancing, along with prayer and ritual smoking of ganja. The Nai Bingi drums are an integral part of this music. There are three basic drums, the repeater, the funde, and the bass drum. These drums are symbolic of the Africanness of the Rastafari, and some mansions assert that Jah's spirit of divine energy is present in the drum. The Naibingi drums are played only by capable Rasta brethren during the hour of chanting. These are known as Bingi warriors. With the drums going and the tempo mounting, attendees are enabled to connect with each other in worship. The drums, especially for Ayanai, it is very important, you see, Ayan. For, for, for Ayanai, it is like to, to, to get Ayanai in debt in that oneness. While Nayabingi music has been used more for private Rastafari gatherings, on a broader scale came reggae. A new revolutionary sound that would become the worldwide ambassador for the Rastafari movement. Reggae was born on the streets in Trenchtown, the main ghetto in Kingston. Your reggae music emerged from a convergence of African retentions in terms of rhythm, drums and rhythm, okay? And in terms of melody, the, the popular and classical songs of Europe and America. Now, Rex, Reggae, Regis, from the Latin, is about the king. You see? Rex, king, Reggae, or Rex, Regis, Reggae. Now, reggae, you can say, is music for the king. Bob Marley came into Trenchtown. Peter Tosh and Wheeler also came into Trenchtown. Now, of all the villages and settlements that advocated Rastafari, Trenchtown became the most prominent. It became most noticeable by the authorities because you had such a creative, um, you know, artistic and industrial expression from these people who were humble and full of love and at the same time in their defiance of Babylon in peace and in an inward rediscovery of self they were threatening because they were able to exercise the dialectics of peace and war. Right there, Reggie's, the, the, the association comes about when the people started to sing these kind of lyrics that requires this sound. And it came out of suffering, struggling lyrics. So we started singing songs like that, you know. Freedom, I and I want some freedom. I and I, okay, you know. When I want some freedom, you know, song like the African Brothers, if you, you know, if you listen to songs, it's all about freedom, equality, justice, you, you know, it's just, so the, so, so the instrument has to go with it to make you, you know, you can't be like, I, I want some freedom. And yeah, you know, it, it, it's not going, you know, it's, it's, it's not real. So that's where it came in, the Rastafarian, the lyrics from the Rastafarian people came into reggae. The, the, the one, two um, chant songs came into reggae. So then it brought the whole thing.
and the culture started to develop through reggae, especially, especially from Bob Marley. Reggae music has an infectious beat and an influential message. It is an avenue of expression for the Rasta community. Dumi Matlangu is a young Rastafarian back in South Africa who got introduced into the movement through the influence of reggae music. What attracted me was, I could say, my sister, um, my, my late sister. She, she bought me my first Bob Marley album. And when I listened to that album, I was like, wow. <laughs> this guy, you know, where does he come from? Why is he talking all of this stuff, you know? And he talked about love, he talked about peace, he talked about unity, he talked about the most high. You know, he talked about things that not many musicians spoke about within um, other music genres. Today, Dumi is a young Rasta living in the city of Pretoria. He's also contributing to spreading the Rasta message through a radio program he co-produces and presents at UNISA, where he is an economic student. At the radio station, UFM, Dumi works with another Rasta, Sista Masejo. Together, they present a social and cultural issues program with a Rasta flavor. You're listening to 98.9. This is the Afri Dub station, and this is your selector, Ras, and I'm not alone. I'm with my sister. How are you doing? I'm very happy. While the movement has mainly, due to reggae music, recruited a large following among youth in South Africa, so. rising into Rastafari from a conservative family setting usually meets parental and community concerns. The community out there doesn't really know much about Rastafari and would somewhat be kind of objective, you know, uh, towards Rastafari in a sense that they would, they still have reservations about us, you know, and most especially your parents, you find you're rising, you know, they don't know where you get, get this, this, the new teachings, where, how come my child is changing? Oh, God, mom, my child is, is growing dreadlocks, you know? He's gonna live in the bundus, he's gonna start going crazy. There's this new Haile Selassie you speak of. Who is he, where does he come from, and you know? There's the ganja that they don't know about, and they're gonna think you're gonna turn to some junkie, and you know what I'm trying to say. So, yes, but it's 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 just simply out of love that they fight with you. you know? In the spirit of sharing his faith, he created a platform of information for other Rastas. Dumi founded the Rasflex, a lifestyle magazine that deals with issues relating to the movement. The magazine attracts Rasta freelance writers and enjoys a growing national distribution in Rasta circles. Dumi also distributes other publications weekly to numerous shops and garages in the Centurion and Pretoria area where he lives. Despite a busy life in the city, he still makes time out to connect with his faith, heading off to a secluded Rasta land on the outskirts of the city for a time of meditation. In accordance with Rasta beliefs, many Rastas work with their own hands, preferring self-employment to the formal system. Any form of employment that puts one above another perpetuates a system Rastas refer to as Babylon. Ancient Babylon is now referred to as Iraq. Ancient. And that is where the word Babylon came from, from the time of Nebuchadnezzar coming down. And that is Iraq today. But when we say Babylon now, we are not speaking backward to restrict or to pink behind Iraq. We speak of Babylon now, represented now by an evil system. And I don't want to hurt no one, but we refer to Babylon as the Illuminatis. Yes, the ones that are the shadow governments, the ones that shape and fashion human destiny, and the ones that seek to control. These are the people now that, that, that are behaving contrary to the spirit of Christ or his commandments. So we call it the Babylonian ways. It's not the ways of Rastafari. Rastafari people follow the compass, which is the Holy Scriptures. 
This belief has encouraged rosters to start their own businesses, an indication that they are indeed masters of their own destiny. 